Over the many years I've been a priest and a pastor, I've always been fascinated by older parishioners sharing with me stories of Sunday dinner at their grandparents' homes. You had to have a pretty good reason back then not to be there for Sunday dinner with Grandma and Grandpa. Everybody in the family was there. All the aunts and uncles, all the cousins. And Grandma would work her darndest all morning long preparing a marvelous meal. Food for everyone to eat and enjoy. And depending on the size of the family, they all gathered around one big table or lots of smaller tables, but everybody was there sharing in the meal. And they didn't rush through the meal. They took their time. Took their time savoring the aromas and the taste of all the food that was presented. And while they're eating, they're sharing. Sharing all sorts of family stories and all sorts of family traditions. And when everybody had their fill, they all didn't run off. They just continued to sit around the table to talk, to listen to be nourished not only by the food, but to be transformed by the stories, transformed into the sense of belonging to a family, a family in which they were important. Sunday dinners a long, long time ago were wonderful events to participate in. Nowadays, For many families, Sunday dinners are, whoever can get there, either it's takeout, drive-through, or microwave, whichever is going to be the fastest. We eat and run because there's lots of other things we need to do on Sunday afternoon. Our readings today continue the theme of Jesus, the bread of life. In our first reading from the book of Proverbs, we have the gift of wisdom imagined to be a woman. A woman who built her house and created a marvelous banquet with meat and wine. And she sent out her maidservants to gather everybody especially the poor, the humble, and the lowly, to share in this feast, to be nourished by this feast, to be transformed by this feast. Transformed from foolishness to understanding or wisdom. Even our responsorial psalm has this notion of a banquet. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, reminds them that not to get drunk on the wine of the world that leads to all sorts of wickedness and evil, but rather to be nourished and transformed and filled by the Holy Spirit. And continuing our reading from chapter 6 of St. John's Gospel, Jesus delves even more deeply into the understanding that he is the bread of life by saying to them, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. And they quarreled. They couldn't understand. What's he saying? What Jesus is saying when he talks about flesh and blood is that he's giving them his entire being, who he is, the divine, the powerful, the almighty God. As we gather today to celebrate the Eucharist, I think we also need to be aware that sometimes we can be tempted to view the Eucharist, to participate in the Eucharist 
with this attitude that we have of simply eat and run. Why have we come here today? Have we come to fulfill an obligation? To get our mass in before we go out to dinner? Are we wanting something from the Lord and we thought, well, this would be a good place to ask him for it? He's bound to listen to me when I'm in church. We need to ask ourselves, why are we here? And why do we come every week? After week? After week? Does our participation in the Eucharist nourish us? Does it transform us? Are we different when we leave and we live through the week? It all depends on the attitude that we come with. If it's an attitude of saying, I'm going to get it over with, then we're sort of just this eat and run. I'll listen to the readings. I'll receive Holy Communion. But boy, I hope he doesn't talk long because there's something else I've got to do that's really important. And although you've been nourished by God's word and received the Lord in the sacrament, it's amazing that the Lord doesn't force his nourishment, his transformation upon us. We have to invite him. And that's why I hope that all of us are here tonight as if it were Sunday dinner a long, long time ago. That we've gathered together as a family, as God's family. And there's room for everyone around the table of the Lord. And we listen to our family story from the Hebrew scriptures and from the Christian scriptures. They're our stories. They tell us who we are, the holy people of God, chosen by God himself, baptized in the name of his son Jesus to be the presence of his son in the world today. And to help us to be that presence in the world today, God invites us to share in this sacred banquet, this holy sacrifice, this sacred meal. And as you and I are nourished by the body and blood of the Lord, his soul and divinity, the true presence. We are truly being nourished and transformed. That's the tough one, the second part. Nourished and transformed. That's why Jesus says to us, that we are to remain in him and he in us. So when we just eat and run, we forget what we become. We forgot that Jesus Christ lives within us. But when you and I remain in that awareness that we now have within ourselves the very life of Jesus, we're opening ourselves to his grace and his work to be transformed. And what does it mean to be transformed? It means we can no longer be content with anger. We can't justify our jealousy. We can't be comfortable with our resentment. And we can't give in to our passions. Whoa. He's asking a lot right because he's given us his all he totally did the will of his father he totally accepted death on the cross and he gives us himself completely in the eucharist body and blood soul and divinity and so when he comes into our life he just doesn't want part of our life like maybe an hour on saturday or sunday or maybe a half an hour during the week No, our God, our Lord, our Savior, 
wants us all, everything about us, because he wants to transform us into that person that God the Father created us to be. And see, God the Father did not create us to be angry people, to be jealous people, to be resentful people, to be prejudiced people. God the Father created us to be his holy people. See, that's what Jesus wants to do for us. Because the wine of the world has tainted us. The wine of the world has brought us down. The wine of the world has made us foolish. And Jesus wants to change that. He wants to transform us. He wants to make us anew. Filled with his peace and his love and his mercy and his forgiveness. And the more you and I allow ourselves to be nourished and transformed by the Lord, the more we become what we say we are, the mystical body of Christ. That's the church, the mystical body of Christ. What people see and hear when you and I are transformed and nourished by Jesus is Jesus himself. That's the life he wants to give us. Yes, he wants to give us eternal life in heaven, but he doesn't want us to wait till we get there. He wants to give us his life now, in his body and in his blood. And so my prayer tonight for all of us is that we've come here tonight not to eat and run, but to be nourished and transformed, transformed into God's holy people, nourished with his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness, which we are willing to share with anyone and everyone we meet this day and the rest of our lives.